کنفرانس مایک پنس در گرد همایی مجاهدین دوم تیر 1401 مجری برنامه آقای مارک شورد رئیس دفتر و مدیر سابق قانونگذاری کاخ سفید امروز از دیدار با افرادی که در ایران سختی ها و رنج های بسیاری را از سر گذرانده اند عمیقا متاثر شدیم دیدن آنها در موزه اینجا در اشرف سه از یک سمت موزه به سمتی دیگر اینها همان داستان های دلخراشی است که سالیان شنیده ایم و اکنون در اینجا به تصویر کشیده شده است to meet uh, people that have lived through the evil and around, to see it uh, presented, but also to make that transition here at Ashraf III from one side of the museum to the next. Because as, uh, as, as uh, heartbreaking as the stories that I have heard for years and now have seen depicted here, با فروتنی میگویم مفتخرم که فرصت ملاقات با مریم رجوی و حضور در اینجا در اشرف سرا دارم زیرا این یکی از دروغهای بزرگ امروز در صحنه جهانی است که هیچ آلترناتیوی وجود ندارد همه شما میدانید که مقاومت واقعی است مردم را در سراسر جهان سازماندهی میکند و سازمان مجاهدین پیشتاز یک ایران آزاد است Well, first, I'm, I'm uh, very humbled to have the opportunity to meet Miriam Rajavi, to be here in Ashraf III, because it is one of the great lies on the world stage today that there is no alternative. You all know the resistance is real. It is marshalling people up all across the world, and MEK is leading the way to a free Iran. من این افتخار را داشتم که با تلاش های سازمان مجاهدین روبرو بشوم تلاش های مقاومت تعهد آزادی برای مردم ایران این تلاش ها عمیقا الهام بخش است و من با الهام بیشتر و با اطمینان بیشتر از پیش که آینده ایران آزادی است از اینجا خواهم رفت The, the efforts of the MEK, the efforts of the resistance, the commitment of freedom for the people of Iran is deeply inspiring. And I will leave here even more inspired and more confident that the future of Iran is freedom. رئیسی شاهدی بر ضعف و آسیب پذیری رژیم تهران است. رئیسی به جرم نسل کشی مورد حساب رسی قرار خواهد گرفت. انتصاب شخصی با چنین گذشته تیر و تاری به عنوان رئیس جمهور رژیم ایران نشان می دهد که این رژیم روزهایش به شمارش افتاده و اکنون به دنبال ارسال پیام ارعاب و ترس از بالاترین سطوح حکومت به سوی مردم است. The election of President Raisi is evidence of a regime in Tehran that feels vulnerable. President Raisi is guilty of genocide, and someday I believe he we will be held to account. But to, but to install as the 
ostensible president uh, of Iran, someone with such a dark past, suggests to me that this is a regime that knows its days are numbered and has sought now to send a message founded on intimidation and fear from almost the highest levels uh, of their government uh, to their people. در حالی که رژیم ناامیدتر به نظر می رسد و با ریاست رئیسی به سرکوب ادامه می دهد اینجا در اشرف سه و جامعه بزرگ ایرانیان مقیم آمریکا با صدای بلندتر اعلام می کنند که مقاومت روز به روز قوی تر و رژیم روز به روز ضعیف تر می شود But as the regime seems more desperate and under President Raisi continues to press down what the world is witnessing, and, and here at Ashraf 3, you are giving voice uh, and your great uh, Iranian-American community is giving voice, is the resistance is growing stronger by the day as the regime is growing weaker by the day. زمانی که رئیس جمهور ترامپ تصمیم گرفت فرمانده نیروی قدس را از میان بردارد من آنجا بودم و معتقدم اکنون که قاسم سلیمانی از میان رفته است مردم ایران و جهان امنتر هستند I was there when uh, when President Trump made the decision uh, to take out the head of the IRGC and I believe the people of Iran and the world is safer now that Qasem Soleimani is gone. اولین کاری که باید انجام بدهیم این است که بلافاصله از هر گونه مذاکره بیشتر با رژیم ایران در وین برای سرگیری توافق اتمی خارج شویم. ما باید روشن سازیم که هیچ تخفیفی در تحریم ها وجود نخواهد داشت و آمریکا و جهان آزاد هرگز اجازه نخواهند داد رژیم ایران به سلاح اتمی دست یابد. In the first thing we should do is immediately withdraw from any further negotiation with Iran in Vienna to restart the Iran nuclear deal. We should stop, cease and desist and simply make it clear that there will be no concessions, there will be no sanction relief and America and the free world will never allow Iran to have a nuclear weapon. من از صمیم قلب معتقدم که مردم آمریکا با مردم ایران هستند و تا تحقق آزادی شما در کنارتان خواهند ایستاد. And I believe with all of my heart that the people of America are with the people of Iran and will stand with you until your freedom is won. مارک شورت ما این فرصت را داشتیم که از موزه بازدید کنیم و برخی از داستانهای واقعا غمانگیز را بشنویم اما در این حال از شجاعت افراد بسیاری از شما که رنج کشیده اید یا خانواده هایتان توسط رژیم حاکم قتل عام شدند بسیار انگیزه گرفتیم It's really our honor to be here. We had an opportunity to have a tour and and to hear some of the really tragic stories, but at the same time, to be really motivated and encouraged by the, by the courage of so many people here who have either suffered yourselves or have had families who have, um, have been massacred by the current regime. زیده ای از کنفرانس مایک پنس با شماری از مجاهدین در اشرف سی دوم تیر 1401 
Honorable Vice President Mike Pence, Second Lady Kerry Pence, Mr. Mark Short. It's an honor and my privilege to be your host here today in Ashraf 3. I think here you got a glance of the situation and what is happening inside of Iran, the resilience of a nation standing in face of tyranny, but also you came face to face with the brutalities of the Iranian regime. But I think what's most important is the resilience, the resistance, and the steadfastness of the Iranian people that you witnessed today. Um, my name is Zolal, and I was born and raised in the US. And, um, but I became aware of the situation in Iran very early on in life, especially since my father, who was a prominent writer, he was killed by the Iranian regime when I was only seven. And that changed my outlook on life. Um, later on, while I was working on Capitol Hill and a few weeks before going off to college, I actually decided to take the path less taken and decided to join the, the Iranian resistance and went to Ashraf. Here today, um, we have with us residents of Ashraf, uh, some of the residents of Ashraf, and former political prisoners, and the families of the victims of the Iranian regime. And I would like to just quickly introduce maybe a few of them uh, to you. I'd like to start with my dear friend Domona. Domona is one of the very few who has seen the prison wards and the torture chambers without, a blind, without blindfolds, because she was taken to prison along with her parents as a child, and spent many months in prisons in Iran. Later on, her father was executed in the massacre of 1988. But despite growing up in Sweden, Domona actually decided to come and join the movement, and she joined the resistance. So one day, no child would have to face the fate that she did. We also have with us here today um, people like Khadija Borhani. At times, the Iranian regime has wiped out entire families. And Khadija Borhani's family is one of those. All six of her brothers were executed by the regime for supporting the MEK. She herself was imprisoned at the age of 12 and spent eight months behind bars. I think everyone here has a story to tell. Uh, we have with us here Nasser Khademi. Um, Nasser was one and a half when the IRGC raided their house in Tehran. Both his parents were killed in that attack and he was wounded himself. At the age of 20, he decided to leave behind his studies and came and joined the resistance. Here we have Shagayir, uh, Shagayir Rajavi. Her father was arrested when she was just a child. And unfortunately, the highlight of her childhood was visiting her father behind prison bars. But she was even denied that when her father was killed under torture when she was 11. In 2011, when there was an attack on Ashraf, um, her sister was shot at point blank. And that was days after her 20th birthday. But Shagayir, she's carrying on the torch today. Um, we also have, I would like to point out um, Tuba Mirzai. I think their family serves as an example of how the Iranian regime actually practices collective punishment. 14 members of the Mirzai family were executed for supporting the MEK, seven in the 1988 massacre. We also have with us here uh, Mr. Reza Hafbaro Daron. Uh, Reza Hafbaran, he was a film producer and uh, ex-political prisoner. His youngest daughter, Saba, was born in Evin prison. He was able to safeguard her life by sending her off to Germany. But a few years later, Saba actually decided to join the movement and went back to Ashraf. In 2011, on April 8th, she was filming the attack um, of the Iraqi forces on Ashraf, and she was shot. The Iraqi forces, at the behest of the Iranian regime, they told Reza that you either defect from the MEK, or we're not going to give any medical attention to her, and she will die. But 
Sabo, Sabo actually um, refused the notion and said, we will stand till the end. And that was a sentence that no one ever forgets. Um, as you can see in Ashraf, you will see people from all generation and ethnicities. But I think uh, one of the most prestigious is probably uh, Mother Hajar. She's 84 years old. And she's 84 years old and from the Kurdistan uh, area of Iran. Mother Hajar's two sons were executed by the Iranian regime. Uh, they were teachers, actually. And um, she is here continuing the fight with three of her other children. Um, I think if I was to try to introduce everyone, it would be epic in itself. And I know we are short on time. So uh, with that said, and with uh, no further ado, we are grateful to be able to hear your discussion. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for hosting us. Um, my name is Mark Short. I had the honor of serving as his chief of staff on both Capitol Hill and when he served as vice president of the United States. And it's really our honor to be here. We had an opportunity to have a tour and, and to hear some of the really tragic stories, but at the same time, to be really motivated and encouraged by the, by the courage of so many people here who have either suffered yourselves or have had families who have, um, have been massacred by the current regime. And, uh, and so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as we, as we go along. I'm gonna start with just a few more questions maybe to help introduce uh, the vice president to you and some of the policies that were pursued during the Trump-Pence administration. But where I'd like to start, if I could, is, is you know, Mr. Vice President, as I said, we've heard a lot about uh, this facility, um, but what does it mean for you to actually been, be here and to, to go through the tour and to see the, the suffering that has happened? This was an important issue for you from your earliest days as a congressman representing the heartland of America. Why was it important for you to stand up for the people of Iran who were suffering under the uh, dictatorships and the, the torture that was uh, suffered upon them by Khomeini before? Well, well, thank you, Mark, and uh, thank you for making the journey with me. You might, you might all appreciate the fact that you're only as good as your people. And Karen Pence and I have been blessed to work with uh, Mark Short, not only at the White House, but on Capitol Hill. And I want to thank you uh, for your devotion to freedom. Um, Mark, I, I, I think I can speak uh, for my wife and I when I tell you that we've been deeply moved today to meet uh, people that have lived through the evil in Iran, to see it uh, presented, but also to make that transition here at Ashraf 3 from one side of the museum to the next. Because as, uh, as, as uh, heartbreaking as the stories that I have heard for years and now have seen depicted here and had the privilege to meet, um, the, the efforts of the MEK, the efforts of the resistance, the commitment of freedom for the people of Iran is deeply inspiring. And I will leave here even more inspired and more confident that the future of Iran is freedom. Mark, I appreciate, given our long association, you mentioning the fact that while I'm very proud of the work the Trump-Pence administration did to isolate uh, the tyrannical regime in, in Tehran, uh, to, uh, to move and to take action, um, 
against those who perpetrate violence, not only against the Iranian people, but across the region. Um, but um, I'm very humbled to say, as you know, that I was not new to this cause. Uh, as a member of Congress, I served on what's known as the House Foreign Affairs Committee. And it was there that uh, I became aware as a member of the Middle East Subcommittee of the, uh, of the, uh, the protest efforts that were taking place. And I remember, uh, I remember the streets being filled in 2009. Um, and being so inspired in the wake of that fraudulent election, the way the people came out and simply demanded a legitimate democracy uh, in Iran. Um, but all the while, uh, a new American administration, just one year in office at the time, remained silent. And so I, I uh, reached across the aisle, as we say in America, and I, I uh, partnered with a Democrat member of the Congress. We introduced a resolution. Because while our White House was staying silent in support of the people that had taken to the streets in Iran, I knew the American people felt differently and would want to be heard. And the House of Representatives passed a resolution almost unanimously. And I'll never forget uh, when the late Senator John McCain uh, and my, our friend Senator Joe Lieberman introduced the same resolution in the Senate. It passed unanimously, and two days later, the Obama administration came forward and gave voice in support of the people that were standing for democracy in Iran. So I was honored and humbled to lead that effort in the Congress, uh, and it was a great privilege for me to carry the experience of, uh, of seeing from afar the efforts on behalf of freedom into my time as Vice President of the United States. But I, I can assure each and every one of you, the American people are with the people of Iran and their commitment to a free and democratic future. I believe it. Mr. Vice President, you often comment in your remarks that uh, weakness arouses evil and what it means to, to the world when America stands strong. Mark, I do believe that weakness arouses evil, but peace comes through strength. And during the Trump-Pence administration, we demonstrated a willingness to use American power and marshal American allies uh, on behalf of, of freedom the historic Abraham Accords that came about in the waning days of our administration were evidence that when, when you stand with their, your allies, when we stood with uh, Israel, when we stood with key Arab states, we were able to come together and isolate Iran as never before. Uh, we brought a, what was called a maximum pressure campaign. Uh, not only did we withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal, but, uh, but we also brought even more economic sanctions. Uh, and, and the net effect of that, we believe, was in part the Abraham Accords. It was, it was making it clear to that region of the world that we would not tolerate the malign influence uh, of Iran or, the, or the, the brutality of the regime toward its own people. Uh, we also demonstrated a willingness to use American power to defend uh, our interest. Uh, I, I was there when, uh, when President Trump made the decision uh, to take out the head of the IRGC. And I believe the people of Iran and the world is safer now that Qasem Soleimani is gone. But, I, I, as we gather here today, Mark, I, I share the concern of millions of Americans that as we meet here at Ashraf 3, this administration is actually at the table in Vienna, uh, making even more concessions to try and entice uh, the regime in, in Tehran to re-enter uh, the Iran nuclear deal. And uh, we believe this is wrong. Uh, and it's dangerous. Uh, I, I want to say that the best information that I have from sources upon which I've come to rely uh, is that 
the last thing we should do today uh, is provide additional resources to this regime. I believe that, uh, that the regime in Tehran is back on its heels. Uh, I believe you see that in what's happening around the IRGC today. There's a great time of instability. And when I hear about the ongoing efforts on the streets of Iran, uh, now more than ever, America should stand with people who long for and take the risk to demand freedom in Iran. And I'll be a voice for that. I promise you. Along, along those same lines, sir, um, President Raisi is notorious for having been directly involved in the massacre of 30,000 political prisoners in 1988, many of whom whose families um, were victims of that massacre are, are represented here today and will be tonight. Um, now that he's ascended to the presidency, we get reports consistently that the resistance units are growing in number and, and frequency of protests. How can we recognize that the change must come from within, how can we nonetheless be encouragers from the outside as the United States to encourage those sorts of activities? Well, let me say first and foremost, I think the election of President Raisi is evidence of a regime in Tehran that feels vulnerable. President Raisi is guilty of genocide, and someday I believe he we will be held to account. <laughs> but, to, but to install as the ostensible president uh, of Iran someone with such a dark past suggests to me that this is a regime that knows its days are numbered and has sought now to send a message founded on intimidation and fear from almost the highest levels uh, of their government uh, to their people. But not surprisingly, uh, as is actually recorded in, in our faith tradition, Mark, that whenever there was a time of pressing down and oppression uh, on people of faith, things grow. And I have been deeply inspired, as, as, the, as it seems hardly possible that the regime could be more brutal, but as the regime seems more desperate and under President Raisi continues to press down what the world is witnessing, and, and here at Ashraf 3, you are giving voice, uh, and your great uh, Iranian-American community is giving voice, is the resistance is growing stronger by the day as the regime is growing weaker by the day. And the first thing we should do is immediately withdraw from any further negotiation with Iran in Vienna to restart the Iran nuclear deal. We should stop, cease, and desist, and simply make it clear that there will be no concessions, there will be no sanction relief, and America and the free world will never allow Iran to have a nuclear weapon. Obviously, uh, this audience um, and those who reside here have been exiled from their home country. Um, many, I think, look for, well, what is the alternative? And um, in October last year, in, in one of your speeches to Iranian-American communities, you said one of the biggest lies the ruling regime has sold the world is there's no alternative to the status quo. But there is an alternative. It's well-organized, fully prepared, perfectly qualified, and popularly supported alternative called the MEK. The MEK is committed to democracy, human rights, and freedom for every citizen of Iran, 
and it's led by an extraordinary woman. Mrs. Rajavi is an inspiration to the world, and her 10-point plan for the future of Iran will ensure freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, and freedom for every Iranian to choose their elected leaders. What encouragement can you give this audience that one day their dreams for a free and secular and democratic Iran may be realized? Well, first, I'm, I'm uh, very humbled to have the opportunity to meet Miriam Rajavi, to be here in Ashraf III, because it is one of the great lies on the world stage today that there is no alternative. You all know the resistance is real. It is marshalling people up all across the world. And MEK is leading the way to a free Iran. In terms of the encouragement, the last part of your question, Mark, Simon Bolivar was a great freedom fighter in South America and Latin America. Um, who said, and I, and I quote, a people who would have freedom will in the end be free. And he was a great champion of democracy and liberty. And when I look out at all of your faces, I think of the tragic experiences of your families, but I see the way it only steeled your resolve. When I think of your, you losing your daughter in 2008, when I think of you losing your family and your sons, but to see you here, to see you taking the heartbreak and turning that into a vision of freedom for the future, I'm more confident than ever. But ultimately, uh, Mark, as you said, like everyone here, we're men of faith. For Karen and me, faith is the very center of our family and always will be. And in our faith tradition, there's a verse that simply says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. That means when we make freedom our cause, we make his cause on this earth our very own. And that means freedom always wins. And I would say to all of our friends here at Ashraf that I think change is coming in America. It's coming in five months, and I believe it's coming in two and a half years. And when that change comes, you will see America turn back to a commitment to freedom. Our freedom and the freedom of uh, liberty-loving people around the world. Let me assure you. Whatever the current American administration is projecting, the American people are strong. And I believe with all of my heart that the people of America are with the people of Iran and will stand with you until your freedom is won. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you all for opening your homes to us. Thank you for uh, your courage. Thank you very much. Thank you all. God bless you.